Ambassador, would be one, two, the one behind Julianne. Well, I think it's a very positive agreement. It has meant uh, the minimum uh, benchmarks that we at the Chamber were looking at. One, it's comprehensive. Two, it offers tangible access to the China market. And three, it does so without sacrificing any of the safeguards on uh, Chinese penetration of the U.S. market. So on the surface, it meets our beginning criteria. Of course, we want to look at the detail. Um, trade is a, a, a long drawn out process and um, you know clearly this opening of trade between the US and China is a very very good thing but it's not going to change anything over the next sort of 24 hours apart from the positive response that equity markets such as uh, Hong Kong's uh, uh, have had and uh, that will be good for business confidence so you could say immediately business confidence will be stimulated by such an agreement but actually trade flows will take some while to develop. So China has had to meet a higher standard of entry than many countries who are already members. Uh, and their barriers have had, uh, they have had to commit to a, 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 a liberalization of their trade barriers far deeper than those of countries that have participated in all eight rounds of uh, GATT negotiations uh, in the post-war period. Uh, they've committed to far greater uh, opening of their financial and telecommunications markets than the vast majority of WTO member countries. I think this is a win-win agreement. The exact uh, content of this agreement is not known to me and has not been released at the time that we're speaking. But if this agreement is akin to what the Chinese committed to in April, which I thought was a very far-reaching set of commitments affecting many areas of their economy much further than they had committed to previously, uh, that that was clearly in the interests of the United States and happily seen as in the interests of China.